So here we go, best of five. First player to win three games, Ozturk to start. And perfect placement right out of the gates on the receive. Kim leaves it short to the forehand for the point. And all that patience, it's the timing in the end. He waits for the opportunity and spins it down the line to the back end. That was his brother, Ali Ozturk, with the full beard in the crowd. Again, Turkey represented very well at the Paralympic Games, especially in the wheelchair events. You can hear the difference in the sound, the pips on the forehand of Kim, the Korean player. When he hits it with that forehand rubber, there's less rotation. But the control factor from Ozturk is outstanding. But this one spanked. What did it do wrong? Did it misbehave? Did it upset you? No. But he crushed it nonetheless. Shot before was the real shot, wasn't it? He just brushed it across. Getting the spin on the ball and the return he was able to dispatch. It's just amazing how patient and confident Oster can be. He'll push these rallies and even allow the opponent to take the first attack because he's comfortable on the defense near the table. Then he'll take the momentum and find the opening. One shot and it's over. But a long serve here for an outright service point. And Ozturk coming into the first towel break. We haven't seen the towel used quite as much, but Ozturk taking this as sort of a mini timeout. Just to make sure that he's cool, dry, and has his game plan for the next points. Oh, great placement. And also, he's nippy around the table, but uh, he was not going to get there. More precision than power. Yeah, and he made a quick move. You could see Ozturk willing to wheel over and really go the distance to try and reach that, leave the table behind. Which in this event is quite risky. You'll notice in the wheelchair events, players will have one hand on the wheel because at any given moment, you might need to twist, turn yourself, or get those extra few centimeters in to reach. For example, but the hands, the control. I mean, it's like wizardry to be able to just pick a place on the table under pressure with heat coming in and make sure that you can touch it ever so gently out of reach, knowing the danger on the other side of the table. That is confidence. A little wild from Ozturk. Kim back on level terms, and uh, he's a wily old character, isn't he? He manages the point very, very well. Good pressure to follow the reverse tomahawk serve. Kim putting on the power down the middle of the table. Placement as well as the pressure. So one point in front in the lead now. Good use of side spin comes across the ball for an inside out forehand down the middle. We hadn't seen a lot of towel breaks. Not used by the players, but I think we're going to see more here. Again, it is class four, so a bit more movement mobility than usual. Or than in the past gold medal matches we've seen today. Ooh, a dribbler. Oh, he chose. Stands up in the corner. That's just how much, you know, you'll take what you can get. Now,
Now this to me is the more impressive point. Kim nearly comes out of the chair, but plays within the rules. You're not allowed to leave the seat. Some part of you must be the thigh, the butt, something must be in contact with the seat when you have to reach for these shots. No chance at this one. Beautiful placement. It was getting away from Oster. It might still do, but at least he's uh, got one back. Now, we've seen this a few times where Oztuk decides that he's going to spin the ball, and it's not necessarily a powerful shot, but just the change of pace and rhythm here makes it difficult to block and keep down. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Three on the row for Oztuk. Is he getting the measure of Kim? I mean, they've played each other so many times. Kim with the advantage in those meetings, but Osterk certainly battling hard here. So coming into the third towel break, dead even. Now, my memory could be wrong here, but it felt like he was down 5-9. It's four in the row that he's yeah that he's brought uh, himself back. It's four consecutive points after five consecutive points from Kim. So uh, like a seesaw, up and down these athletes. But uh, this is a massive point. That was trouble. Good pressure, he sets it up well by going right at the baseline into the body, and Kim with the follow-up attack. No chance to return it. Game point for the Korean superstar, Kim Young-un. It's exactly what you were talking about, the speed to get around the table. Finisher got him up on one wheel. Kim really had to work hard for that. Oztuk got everything back into play. Far to the forehand, deep to the backhand corner. Really, the chair was not stopping him, but just getting him to the ball. And finally, Kim could put it away. Game one in the bag by a narrow margin, 11 to nine. And the best point of the match so far. And if you're Abdullah Oztuk, what do you feel? You played an absolute blinder and you still lose the point. 11-9, I wonder if this one is going to go. We've had a couple in this session go into the fifth game, gold medal matches. Will this one also be a classic? They're well matched, these two. One thing we do know is the Korean coach is the louder of the two coaches. Although Ostok's coach has quite a lot to say at the moment. It is always interesting to see how involved the coaches get from the corner. A variety of personalities, just like the players, and most of the coaches were former world-class players at one point, so they know from experience what it takes and why you shouldn't necessarily worry or what maybe the best response is to change under pressure. But for some you know, coaches, it's almost they're, they're living vicariously through their athlete. They're out there with them, so every point that's won, they feel like when they celebrate it, it's a team thing, you know? As demonstrated there in the replay. You win the points, I'll show for you. You take care of that part, I'll get your back. So back for game number two, Kim Young-un leading one game to zero, serves on his side. Not just the coaches, of course, making the noise. There is a fine contingent of Turkish and Korean coaches, players, support staff in here, making some good noise and a good atmosphere.
That inside out forehand off the pips has been quite tricky. He's played it on the parallel very well, but just brushing the side of the ball to make it bend. After all, with pips, there's a little bit more of a knuckling effect. So first point on the scoreboard here for Kim in game number two. Oh, what, what a reaction from Kim, had to readjust and did it in some style. Amazing how hard these athletes work. I was in a lift around lunchtime with one of the Korean athletes and you can just see just how no, he just lobbed him down on the run. He must have been about four feet outside of the table on this wheels way over, sky lobs it back. That is swag, that is confidence, and it earns him the point. Osterk, like nothing. Just go back to that point about the hands and, and how much effort they put in, the uh, how hard and the calluses on, on the hands. They really do suffer for their sport. But when you see the shot uh, in the point previously from Ostuk, it must be all worth it, surely. You see one sailing on the angle. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting in terms of the hands in particular. Neither of these players, they have enough control with the palms, the fingertips to really grip the racket on their own. But in classes one and two, you'll see them strapping in a lot. Oh, the reach extends the racket to the fingertips. Gets way in short for this and plays it back even wider. Osterk says not, you know better, you know what to do. Osterk's game is a very wise game. It's about control, experience. Tactically, he's quite gifted. For example here, turns to the side, you might think, yeah, he's gonna play cross court, the safe shot. Second time around, the most obvious shot would have been to do the same, but he goes down the line for the parallel winner. And again, backing off the table. His defense is strong, but he knows after leaving this one a little bit high, he's not gonna be able to take it from right up, so he backs up quickly, but just out of reach. Kim, good power. Yeah, it would have been a perfect shot in class two, not in class four. Good spin into the middle here. Ulsterk's spin game, again, it's not overpowering, it's just very difficult to control. And that's ultimately the goal, is to win the point, not have the most machismo, simply win the match. <laughs> casual, casual, a little tap to the forehead, almost to his opponent. I'm going to outthink you, pal. It's funny, I feel like that was a personal thing, but it could have gone either way. I mean, it was definitely, yeah, smart playing, that's right. That's what you have to do, a little reminder to play smart. And a smart play here as well, short side of the table. He tapped the side of his head, of course, as he was wheeling himself towards the uh, Korean coach, which I thought was quite amusing as well, whether he was looking at him at the same time as a mute point. But uh, certainly at the moment, he is being the smartest at the table. You can see the look from Kim, not happy with how it's going. He rolls over to the corner and sits next to the coach and says, that was incredibly smart of me. Don't you agree? Oh, my goodness. Woo! Pull over, you've been speeding. That ball just so fast. What were we saying about finesse over power? In this point, I have nothing to say about finesse. <laughs> Didn't work for Allstoke, that's for sure. Yeah, well, he set it up well. Kim earned himself the shot. Shut down the finesse game of his opponent for that moment. Oh, dear. 
That is not the time to do that. Omiyage. Never a good time, I guess. 10-0. If you're up 10-0, that might be the one. A good parallel spin shot. Osterk one point away from getting himself on the scoreboard after a very narrow victory for his opponent in game one. Oh, quick reactions, lovely forehand. He isn't going to give up that easily. I like the, the way Kim sideswipes the ball across the body. It makes it very awkward and makes it curve. Tough to counter off those pips. One game point saved, four more to go for Ozturk. Let service. Might have been the verticality of the toss was the warning. Ooh, the dribbler, the fortunate, comes over. And Oster takes a moment. And then right after, well, is thrilled that he got the game in the bag. So one game apiece. Level playing field now. We'll see who takes the lead in game number three, Oster or Kim. I think it's fair to say, particularly in that game, he made his own luck. He was so many points up. I think he would have got over the line anyway. But what a fabulous game from the Turkish athlete. A lot of brain, a little bit of brawn. But he's an intelligent player who works his opponent around the table. Kim looked comfortable, or more comfortable, in that first game. But he looked a bit at sea. And I wonder whether the uh, Korean coach has enough time in this timeout, uh, in this uh, switch between games, just to say what he thinks he needs to say, because he was outclassed. That was the shot of the game. Oh, that was spectacular as he rolls away. Oh, just too pretty, too pretty. I mean, I've been watching every day for hours, classes one through five players in wheelchairs, and not once in countless hours of outstanding world-class wheelchair table tennis have I seen someone roll away from the table off to the side without looking back and lobbing it for a winner like that. And then wheeling away as if it was nothing. Yep. Moves back in after good defense in the wide angle. Ozturk follows up by blitzing the table a little bit. Again, not afraid to relocate quite quickly, more than most, near and far from the table. But a net recovery here, Kim, with a good move into that short forehand side. His reach, a little break off the net, hence the acknowledgement. The forehand had a bit of tomahawk spin on it, but the backhand, all the pace. I mean, we've seen that a few times now from Kim, and his upper body strength is just outstanding. That's, I think, the definition of a well-constructed point. Yeah. Once again, Ozturk with the spin. Not just the speed, but changing up the rhythm of the game. Parallel attack, secure shot for the point. <laughs> Fabulous last two shots from Kim. The Penultimate one, just on a little snap of the wrist. And that set him up for the point. Those parallel forehands have been just all day long. High percentage shots. Now, they're low percentage shots in general to make because you've got less room on the table to work with, but that's the surprise factor. And with that extra spin, Oldsturk's been incredibly consistent. 
So first towel break, dead even. Three points apiece now. If you're newer to table tennis, players are allowed to use the towel every six points. Yeah, this match is uh, zipping along. I think they'll be grateful for a little towel down. That was, how did he do that? That was astonishing. Almost like a snake, an under-the-table spin shot. Waited for it to come up. I mean, in the wheelchair game, you've got racket heads straight up most of the time. He did a 180 with the racket. Ooh, doesn't climb over the net. Some frustration there after very controlled shots from under the table. Ozturk knows that he's capable of winning points from there, but just missed the contact that he wanted. So Kim ties it up at four points apiece on screen, looking determined here. Now this time he delivers the power. When he goes cross court, he makes it count. And he changed up the patterns for the first time in a while. Kim said, okay, he's done the last three to my backhand. I'll cover the backhand. And nope, went the other way. Ooh, just missing wide on that inside out forehand. Very close to the table. Coaches are allowed to talk to their players between the points. Ooh. Five, six. Yep. Well, there's the apology. It's so tight, and this is obviously a pivotal game. These players, you can see why they've been hoovering up the golds at the Paralympics. The sound of that flatter hitting shot. He goes for broke on this one. The confidence to power through. Less about spin on this one and more about speed. Sacrifices finesse and just flashes through this one. Two point lead at the second towel break. Now Abdullah Ozturk. It's a proper old slap, wasn't it? It's funny, if you're newer to table tennis, the difference in sound is so important. You could shut your eyes and know that that was a fast, flat shot. Whenever I'm introducing someone to the sport, I'd like them to shut their eyes and tell me which is the spinny shot and which is the flat one. Ooh, reverse tomahawk serve, a kick with the top and side spin on that second bounce, jumps up and finds the edge of the racket. Now a timeout on the Korean side. I'd venture that was a spinny one. Well, it sure was. And on the <laughs> serves generally, there's a bit more spin for sake of control and kick. As I think we mentioned earlier, there were a few times where a player took some spin off the serve just to earn something back that might have popped up. And occasionally the, the flat, fast serve just to surprise your opponent. But like you say, in particular in the wheelchair, the, the Tom Hawk, the, the side spin can be very difficult to control. There's another look at it right at the top of the racket. Now you might think, was that an accident? And the answer is no. When he hits the ball near the top, or the part of the racket that's farthest away from the handle, that means there's more racket speed there. Much like hitting at the end of a bat, it's simply moving faster so you can generate more speed and more spin, but it's tougher to control. And also hit it with what, because we probably wouldn't expect him to hit it with that side of, of the racket. I think that might've surprised Kim as well, that almost inside out tomahawk. Right, the reverse tomahawk using the backhand side of the racket and he does it very deceptively, you're right. Tough to tell until the last moment which way the ball's gonna curve. So back from the timeout, Kim in blue, representing South Korea, looking to make his way back in. This point was spectacular. 
This was the point of the match for me so far. Ulsterk rips the ball and it comes right back. He recovers. He was moved out of position on numerous occasions throughout this point. Well, they both were, and he outlasted, didn't he, Kim? Brilliant stuff. And that parallel forehand comes back into business. Now, if this timeout does not save Kim the game, it will have been burned. It will have been diffused by Osterk. Five game points on the receive for this one here. Good pressure, Kim fighting, playing the middle of the table here to put it right back to where it came from and save a game point. Goodness, that backhand comes out and it bruises so hard. Baseline, racket high, and as fast as can be, that lower camera angle, you can really see the ball just whizzing past. Lined it up beautifully, still fighting. Ah, but a little bit off the top of the net for Osterk. And after taking that moment, recognizes that this is just one game away from being his gold medal, Abdullah Ozturk, up two games to one over Kim Young-un, the world number two, who has a winning record and two gold medals to his name already in singles. But the defending gold medalist on screen, Abdullah Ozturk, will be back with game number four of the men's singles class four gold medal match. Kim, well, he must wonder what he has to do. He's not been playing badly, but he's been out-muscled, out-thought, out-played in that third game. 11-7 after 11-6, and the tide is going one way at the moment, and it's not the Koreans' way. For all the different skills that Kim has demonstrated out here, it's almost creepy how much control and wisdom Ozturk has in the rally. It's not much different from the men's singles final at the Olympic Games where you've got an explosive player with so much power on one side of the table. And then on the other side, someone with incredible control who's able to shut it down and just let the opponent attack first without really blinking or batting an eye. So starting off game number four, down one to two, Kim, a man on a mission. Ozturk has adjusted so well to those fading forehands, the brushing short pip shot, or the pipped forehand of Kim, just sort of floats it back to the middle of the table and waits for his opportunity to spin it back. The defense in this, Kim with two attacks, the second one even faster than the first. Well, the tide is certainly going one way at the moment. What can Kim do here? It's funny, a lot of people ask, why does he just keep hitting the ball right to his racket? It appears that way. Credit to the guy putting his racket in the right spot every time. <laughs> it's a question of perspective. And I think it's sort of like magic. You're not watching the hand that's not featured in front of you. You're watching the opponent who's hitting the ball. And by the time you look at where the ball went, the racket's already there. And if you are watching the, the person who's about to receive, you can see sometimes that uh, racket flashing around as they try to get the right side, the right rubber for whatever shot they think is coming.
but handled well quickly right off the bounce from the middle of the table. Kim going deep to the backhand side gets his first point this game. A much needed bit of fuel in the tank now on the scoreboard anyway. And he's on his own, isn't he, really, in many ways in that uh, he's burned that timeout. He's experienced enough at, uh, what, 36 years of age to be able to get this under control. So casual in that point. The first shot from Ozturk, he lets come off the table and does that underhanded shot and just leaves the spin on, guiding it back. He just doesn't seem phased by nearly anything right now. He's so confident on the defense and ready to quickly turn it into an attack when he needs. Let's. 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 It's still, <laughs> it's, it's, it's still let. I love it. Let, let, let. Gentlemen. <laughs> and is it a let yet? Okay, now it's a let. But he did the right thing to keep playing the point. You don't stop playing until the umpire agrees that it's a let. Very close. Had the idea almost biting his finger there with the anticipation of how close that shot was. I mean, this is the precision of his game. He plays these touch shots so well. Little glance at the umpire, just in case. He could agree that it had taken a little nib off the side. No dice. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. It reminded me when Dr. Evil sort of turns his pinky up. Like, I've got a plan now. The world is mine. Well, the Paralympic Games might be here shortly. Not enough side spin to curve this back on. It is Kim who is making his way back in. From down 0-3, he's won three of the next four points to put some real pressure on the man with the serve right now in the lead in games, Abdullah Ozturk. But this serve is not only a momentum breaker, but one to set them apart. What are you thinking? I'm just thinking he, he is feeding off. He can see his fans. He's facing the fans and he's feeding off them. It's well, an I, interesting point you brought up earlier. Well, I, I say fans. It's his mates. It's his team. It's his other coaches. And if you can't be inspired by them, well, you... You have to be inspired by yourself, of course, but yeah, it helps. Seeing is believing. When you can see the reactions, the hands in the air, people cheering for you, it definitely does motivate you. And good pressure into the middle, right on that crossover point. Now in wheelchairs, players, as I mentioned earlier, have the rackets up, the racket head up a little bit more, but still, they use the backhands effectively as well, so that indecision point is tough when the ball comes in quickly and you have to choose. This one a little bit shallow on the table. It stays inside and Kim takes it early off the bounce. Watch where this one comes down on the table. Just behind the net, which leaves the angle for Kim. Very smart, I'd say capitalizing on that opportunity. Well, you never write him off, do you, Kim Young gun Back to within touching distance. That's an outstanding reach. He starts to move, but he doesn't go too far. He uses his reach to make sure that he can keep his positioning at the back and center of the table. A lot of tactics that are a little bit different in the standing events, they'd say feet first, but at times you know that if your feet go too far, you're not gonna be able to recover. And it's the same with the chair here. Has to make sure he keeps his position at the middle and he does just that with that full extension. So now six points apiece. If Osterk wins this game, that is it. Kim needs to win this and the next for the gold medal.
Good placement deep on the table after he leans way out of reach. Well now, very, very close. I think it was the second bounce that came over, but it was his own side for Ozturk. Great serve, wasn't it? It was fast, it was low, it had some spin on it as well, and uh, put him in charge of the point. And it's not all over just yet. But no messing around this time. Follows up the attack with an even faster one. One baseline and then right on top of it, Kim in front by one point. How deep were those shots? Right on the edge into the body of Osterk. You wouldn't want to call this, would you? It's so tight. The two best players in this classification in this gold medal match and well, they are battling it out. The hands you were talking about, the callus is all over. At full extension twice, this time the second shot right into the body. Shorter shot from Kim and it pays off. Oh, what flexibility, what agility, what commitment to the point as well. He has really dug deep in this game. It's just so amazing that you can go from defense, 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 withstand the blows and attacks from the opponent. And the first time it sits up above shoulder height, you rip it once and it is over. Kim trying to fight fire with fire, possibly not the most advisable tactic. Nine, nine. Well, two points for the gold medal for this young man. Uh, Possibly two points to take it into a fifth game. Well, Osterk has the serves on his side. The last two serve combination we will see in game number four. So he could use them to his effect. Statistically speaking, the server tends to have the advantage. So we'll see. But in the rally, the table not wide enough for this wide push, and it's Kim who earns himself a game point to send this to the decider. Oh, Kim, inscrutable. You know exactly how disappointed Ostok was. Very patient play and never going out of his comfort zone, but spinning when he had the opportunity. The controlled game of Osterk ties it up at 10 points apiece. These are two incredible athletes, aren't they? Goodness me. Blow for blow. Tactic for counter tactic. Yeah, it's been a battle of minds. It's been a battle of physicality. The stamina tested. We'll see here alternating serves deuce in game number four. He's so comfortable to cover that backhand corner of the table. Ozturk like he never even moved there. 
brings it back time and time again and now has his first gold medal point. He says just one more, I'm one point away. But he can't celebrate too early. Kim is very capable of coming back if ever a player was. Serve with Ozturk on his gold medal point. And he does it, Abdullah Ozturk takes it. He defends his title and takes the gold medal once again. Rio at Tokyo 2020 right out of the wheelchair over the barriers. What a celebration, leaps on through. Look at this, the celebration and Turkey flags all around to wrap the gold medalist in and helped right back up into the chair. He pulls a Zhang Jiku straight out of the wheelchair. Congratulations to the 31 year old world ring number one for a spectacular finish at Deuce in game number four over the world number two, his arch nemesis from Rio 2016. What a spectacle. Well, we have seen barriers knocked down before in this Paralympic table tennis competition, but none with perhaps so much joy and so much emotion as Abdullah Ozturk. You have to feel for Kim. He didn't play badly at all, but uh, the tide turned after that first game and it was one way traffic. And it is Abdullah Ozturk, the 31 year old, who retains his title. Both these athletes now with two Paralympic gold medals to their name. They are both titans of this sport. And we've just seen in the last, how many minutes was it? 41 minutes, why they are so well regarded. Well, when you saw Will Bailey, if you did the other day, kick through the barriers, I didn't think that two times in three days I would see an homage to Zhang Ji Ke, respect to the 2014 Men's World Cup champion but it has become an iconic celebration that means more than say, a new fan to the sport can enjoy it at face value. But if you've been watching the sport for a while, you know that this is something special. And he headed for the barriers with the same commitment as each and every shot he made at the table. Here he goes, he's off. This is, <laughs> I love this. Now, did he want to stop? It, too late. He's off in it. Oh, that's brilliant. It's such a great celebration. <laughs> perfect landing, he, too. He styled it out. If this were gymnastics, I mean, it's he could turn to ten. the... Exactly. Perfect 10. He landed it exactly as you wanted the jump to go. Abdullah Ozturk and is going to be well celebrated. He still has another week or so before he will leave Japan because he's got the team event. But alongside his brother, he makes for a very powerful Turkish team. But we can't go without uh, acknowledging this man here. Kim Jong-un, 36 years old, was world number one in May of 2019 and had an eight and six record coming into this match. But here are the stats on screen.